Hi guys, me again with another YouTube video. Today we're going to be taking a look at a, basically a pretty custom uh, model, basically. The L86, it really did not run a whole lot of British service. It came out of service um, relatively quick. It was replaced with other more belt fed options, things like that. So we never saw, as far as I know, an A2 version. So uh, the L85A2 introduced this rail forend for obvious reasons. The L83 has a newer furniture um, assembly and rail system that H&K produced for it. Um, and I believe that's what's currently being used as a standard British assault rifle. I'm not entirely sure. Other than, like, obviously M4s and AR-15 style weapons. So I kind of wanted to make my own version of an L86A2. Uh, so this is actually what we started with. So a couple of changes. Uh, we basically went and we got the original um, L86 that I had made. And we replaced the forend with the newer rail version that I made for Rainbow Six Siege. And we kind of replaced the charging handle just a little bit because I believe it also uses a different charging handle design. Um, so that's to start off with. This is an old paint scheme that I used ages ago uh, in a really, really old model. So uh, that does not actually stay. So going forward, the next thing that obviously L86s used were really, really big drum magazines. And I really wanted to make a really, really smooth looking drum magazine. So that is what you see here. The other thing that I wanted to do with this drum magazine was be able to load it with a whole bunch of ammunition. And that is what we accomplished. This is kind of hard to see because it's kind of overexposed. But these are translucent pieces that you can't actually buy in real life. And these are all bullets on the inside of this. Uh, so we are actually able to load this drum ma magazine. This is one of our rendered images. As, again, these are translucent pieces, and you can see all the bullets on the inside of them. This is a really, really smooth-looking design. I really, really like this design. This was really complicated to do, and it is probably something that I will not do again until I am absolutely needed to do it again. This is also where we get into a lot more custom building going on. Um, so as you can see, our charging handle has changed. We've added Alan's Custom Legos ACOG on top of the weapon itself. We've added Allen's Custom Legos um, angled foregrip on this weapon as well. And we've added a custom bipod that you would have seen on um, most L86s anyways. So that's that. Uh, this is kind of how we started the um, magazine and getting it kind of how I, I wanted it to get. It was pretty complicated. It uses Technic pieces. Um, I don't think I actually have a version of it. You can see, you see these gear teeth right here. This uses a really big set of gears to set up the circle, basically. Uh, and then we build off of those gears using Technic pieces going forward, and it's complicated in a whole bunch of different ways. This is another rendered image from a different angle, just to give you guys uh, a better view of what exactly is going on. Uh, you can kind of see through, you can see the translucent pieces, and you can see there's a little bit of yellow right here. Uh, that's, again, a bullet on the inside of this. So here it is inside of LDD. You can see the yellow a lot better through this one. There's a lot going on. This is a huge gun. Obviously, you would not hand this to someone who weighs 160 pounds and expect them to be able to uh, walk around with this thing. This thing is huge. So, uh, this retains pretty much all of my basic L86 design from my original L86 and my more updated L85, so I'm not going to dwell too much on that part of it. We are going to talk about this magazine, because this magazine was really hard, and again, you can see the bullets on the inside of this. Uh, this, is, by the way, is the winding mechanism. You can actually spin this. This is on a, uh, a turntable, so you can, you can spin that, so that's cool. Just wanted to point that out. This goes into uh, a three stud wide up here, and then you can start to see it. Let's we go ahead and hide all of these translucent pieces. 
and then a couple of these. You can see these really big gear teeth here. As you can see, that is what actually set up the circle for me in getting this really perfect looking circle, as you can see. And then you can see that we came off of this using um, Technic pieces like so that um, stick into this. You can see that this piece is a brick with the hole that stick into that and then flatten out to kind of produce the curve going all the way around, which is really, really complicated. And then you can see that in order for this to be held on where it's supposed to be, we've got some uh, Technic going forward like that and through the bottom down here as well. To actually load this was pretty simple because once we have this front piece on, we have a whole bunch of holes that we can put all of these bullets into, so we did. Uh, when I was trying to actually attach this to the bottom of the magazine, I actually wanted to attach it here on this piece right here because then it would be straight up and down. Uh, but that did not work out because the actual model itself just for some reason really wanted to go right here So I said whatever and I put it right there So all of this is now at a slight 45 degree angle and honestly, I don't think it's a bad thing uh, You can't really tell and it creates this really cool X pattern going on here uh, with me holding this back plate on using my uh, pieces so yeah, that's that's the drum mag. It's it's bulky. It's huge. Um, I'm so happy that this actually has a magazine release on it right here to lock this sucker into place. Because if not, the, it's just gonna fall. There, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about this. This is just gonna fall straight out of the gun, no matter what. If there was no magazine release on this, not too much to talk about going on up here. Uh, it's really, like I said, just pretty standard. I've already gone over this um, rail before. I've talked about the angle to grip before. This is Alan's custom Legos design. It's a really, really cool design. I really like it. This ACOG, Alan's custom Lego design. Again, really like it. It's got the actual dot in it using translucent piece, so that looks pretty cool. Uh, and then this bipod is pretty simple. Really, this uses, um, as you can see, universal joints from um, Technic to set this up um, to get the kind of the uh, angles going on. And then obviously this would never, you wouldn't be able to support the weight of the rifle on this in real life, but it does unfold uh, really well. So if we come through, this is the pivot point on the rifle. So if we can just drop this, I don't know, let me, let's do it this way. Click this button and hide everything like so. Uh, and then we can take and actually do this basically. And you could do this in all sorts of different angles. Uh, so, whatever you feel like, let's just for the sake of this video, let's max it out as much as possible. This one. Someone want to help me, apparently. Come on, you can do it. You can see that the other one on the other side is just maxed out way further. There we go. That's obviously inside of Ricker right now, but, but you can get a wide support angle on this uh, for like a wall or something like that. And uh, obviously these uh, ball joints don't have any like spring tension or anything like that. They're actually really, really loose. So you wouldn't be able to get away with too much uh, but for the sake of looking cool, you would be able to do that. So, and then this just folds back up into place. So, so uh, that's that. Really, not too much going on. Again, you would never give this to someone who weighs nothing under 300 pounds. This is a huge weapon. It would weigh tons with all the accessories on it: uh, angle foregrip, the ACOG. This huge drum magazine, the monopods here, even though you really don't need it at this point. You've got this bipod, this longer barrel. Uh, it's supposed to be a heavier barrel. It's just there's so much going on that you would never hand it to someone who's lightweight. So that is the L86A2 light support weapon. This has never actually been fielded or shown before. As far as I know, this was just a kind of custom design that I wanted to do. So 
there you guys have it. Thanks so much for watching. Remember, come right and subscribe for more videos similar to this one. I will see you guys later in another YouTube video.